Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 12 beta 7 is now out for developers on all the different iOS devices from the 5S and newer. Came in at 361.6 megabytes on my iPhone 10. I've installed it on all of these different devices as well. So what I have here is the first generation iPad Pro, the iPhone SE and the iPhone 7 Plus. I've been using these devices to install the betas and we'll continue to use those as well. Now let's take a look at the build number and then talk about what's new. This build is 16A5354B, and as we get closer to the final, this last letter here, as we get closer to A, it usually signifies that we're getting close to the last build. There may be a few more before it releases in September. Now the major thing you need to know about this one is group FaceTime is no longer in iOS 12 and won't be released with the initial release. So Apple has said they've removed it from all of these devices. I guess they had some problems with it and it will be implemented later this fall in a future software update. So that's according to Apple in the notes, unfortunately. Now when I initially installed this on all these devices, these three work just fine. Actually everything's nice and smooth on these. Everything's working well. But on the iPhone 10, I had a ton of lockups initially. Things wouldn't open. I'd try to open the app store. It would just freeze and sit there for a good 10 to 30 seconds sometimes. Then I'd use it a little bit. It would freeze again. I couldn't even get in initially with my password, so I had to hard reboot it. That seemed to fix the problem, but... Also, some people are saying that screen time may fix that issue for you. So if you're having this with this beta, go into screen time down here under settings and turn it off. Now mentioning screen time or speaking of screen time, screen time, I guess there were some bypasses people were able to use to get around screen time. Screen time. So if your children had screen time limits, there was a way for them to bypass that. Apple has fixed that in this beta and they're suggesting that if you're using screen time that way that you reset your password, at least for the parent to reset their password anyway. So that's as far as the bugs I've had so far. That doesn't mean there won't be more bugs later. Under settings, I had some bugs initially under notifications. None of these icons showed up either. So that's been resolved in the past few minutes as well. Now there are a couple little changes. One of them is this measure app. The measure app is now horizontal. I'll show you the old one here where this line was vertical, but it's now horizontal. Not a big change. It's just something to note. And also when you first initially open messages, you now get a splash screen and this splash screen comes up and talks about doing more with messages with your own Memoji, new ways to share and your conversation streamlined. So that came up on all of these devices when I went into messages. Also, when I went into books, I got this splash screen about the privacy information and a little introduction. Now I've been in books on some of these devices, but not all of them. But for me, it was new this time around. I don't know if it was for anyone else in this beta, Apple has said there are six resolved issues. Now there may be more resolved issues, but they only note six. One of them is the issue when you went into settings on one of your devices, it would give you a black screen. Sometimes that should be fully resolved. So anytime you're in any of these settings, it should be okay. When you go into settings on any of these devices, it was kind of random where you would get that black screen that should be fixed. Also, if you're using HomeKit and Apple TV, any of the issues you were having between those devices should now be resolved as well. Also, the Siri shortcuts that people are having issues with, all of that should be fixed as far as CarPlay and all of those as well. Unless your phone is locked and you're in CarPlay, then you may still have an issue. Now, as far as known issues, there's still 13 known issues. One of those is Apple Pay may become unavailable. So if you're using Apple Pay and it just doesn't work or or isn't opening, you may need to reboot the device according to Apple. So they're aware of that and they're going to work on it. That Wi-Fi calling bug with T-Mobile is still there and also iOS 12 beta camera effects and messages on certain device, that bug is still there from a couple betas ago. Now there's not much more new going on. Everything seems fast and fluid on all of these devices. All of the apps seem to load okay. Apparently I already had this one open, but you'll see apps are loading just fine. Things like Minecraft, Fortnite should work okay, and there should be no problems. I looked around on the iPad Pro. I wasn't able to find anything new whatsoever on the iPad. It does seem to be working okay. My battery in the past was not so great, but it's going to take a few days to know how battery is on all of these devices. So it's just going to take a while for that to happen, and you'll see. If you're playing games, give it a moment. It was a little choppy there, but you still should be able to play your games on any of these devices. So you shouldn't have any issues there. 
Also, let's take a look at the Geekbench, as I know a lot of you want to take a look at that and see how it did compared to the previous one. So the Geekbench scores came in at 4,229 for single core, 10,143 for multi-core. I ran it two times just to see how it would be compared to the previous versions, and I actually got the exact same single core score and a little bit lower multi-core score. So that doesn't really mean a whole lot. We'll only know after a few days how battery and performance are, and I'll be sure to do a follow-up with that information. So there's no new wallpapers, no new dark mode or anything like that to be found. Uh, nothing new that I could find other than what I've mentioned. Maybe there's some small little issues, and if there is, I'll share them in a later video with a follow-up. But let me know if you've found anything in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.